Well, this morning I'm really excited, as I always am, to share God's Word with you. We are preparing our hearts for a move of the Spirit. Everyone out there agree with me? If you agree with me that we are preparing our hearts for a move of the Spirit, press the like, press the heart button, comment, because we are going to go together and usher in the presence of God in our lives, our families, and our community. We are believing for a mighty outpouring of God's Spirit. There's certain things that we look at through scriptures that we see that are in place every time God moves. And one of the things that is absolutely key in any move of God, if you study revivals, you will notice that in every revival, every move of God, prayer and unity has been absolutely key. When you look at the book of Acts, they were all in one accord. When you look at every single time God moves in, in a powerful way, you find that God's people were one. They had faith in God. They were moved by God in a powerful way. Today, we want to focus on prayer and unity. And for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be examining what prayer is, how to pray, when to pray, what to pray. I love prayer. I believe prayer changes things. So with that in mind, can we pray? Can we pray over God's word? Ask God's blessing in this time to open up our hearts to hear what the Spirit has to say. Come on, let's pray. Lord, it is a privilege to come to you once again. I pray over this word right now that, Lord, you would speak to us, that, Lord, we would open up our hearts to hear only from you. I pray against every distraction. I pray, Lord, that our spiritual ears will be able to hear the very heartbeat of God. I always pray it because I believe it, Lord. Anything that's birthed of the Spirit in this word, may it birth life within us. Anything that's of the flesh, it'll come to naught. So, Lord, I thank you right now that you are going to speak to us, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to quote a very powerful scripture. And it's a scripture that I believe is going to be an incredible challenge of the next coming weeks for each and every one of us. It's found in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. And it simply says this. Pray without ceasing. That's the scripture. Right then and then. One scripture. Pray without ceasing. Ceasing. This is such a short yet powerful verse in the Bible. Prayer has been a topic of discussion for the church since the beginning of the church's existence. Topics like how to pray, topics like pray like Jesus or the top 10 keys to prayer. I mean, pastors for centuries have been preaching about prayer. Jesus himself spoke about prayer. The early disciples devoted themselves to prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a subject that we can never ever stop talking about because I believe that prayer ushers in the presence of God. Prayer, especially in the name of Jesus, has the ability to change circumstances, to allow God to move in a powerful supernatural way. In the Bible, we see that prayer has turned God's heart to His people, has delivered His people, has healed His people, has moved in a powerful way. Why? Because people prayed. It's no different today. Why this verse is so challenging, even though it's so short, it is so challenging because it literally means our life should be filled with prayer. But unfortunately, we only pray in certain circumstances, or should I say, because of certain circumstances. This led me to ask, how do we change circumstances? How do circumstances affect us? What should our mindset be in terms of our thinking when facing struggles, hardships, and even in good times? What should we think about? What should we be doing in those situations? Circumstance. The dictionary defines circumstance as a condition, detail, part, or attribute with respect to time place, manner, agent, etc., that accompanies, determines, I want you to focus on that word, determines, or here's another word, modifies, effect, or event. A modifying or influencing factor. Now, circumstances has the ability to modify or change something. So let me tell you one fact that can never be modified, that can never be changed. Jesus saves. Jesus heals. 
Jesus delivers. Jesus changes things which the world thinks cannot be changed. Ladies and gentlemen, there's one fact, there's one circumstance that can never ever be changed. And his name is Jesus Christ. What a privilege it is to know that today you and I are anchored on this rock. Our foundation is a sure foundation and his name is Jesus. I should never worry about circumstances because I have authority, wisdom and access to create any and every circumstance I desire because of God's power and grace and just the fact that he has all authority makes the difference. Someone once said this, your circumstances don't determine your destiny. They just reflect your current location and what you are doing or not doing in that moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all in a circumstance today. Your circumstance is totally different to mine. But the reality is we're all in different circumstances, different problems, different things happening in our lives. But the good news is Jesus is still the same. So how does this affect prayer? When we are in a circumstance, what should we focus on, especially when we are praying? The circumstances, whether they're good or bad, should it actually influence us in our prayers, our relationship with God, our future? There's a couple of points I want to make today. And the first one is simply this. Circumstances and facts change. Truth doesn't. God's word is truth. God's word does not change. Your circumstance might change from one day to the next day. For example, your financial condition can change for the worse by a sudden illness or an accident or an unforeseen layoff or any sort of catastrophic event such as death or divorce. Let's be honest, many of us over the last year, two years, our financial circumstances has radically changed. Your financial condition can also change for the better. How? With an unexpected bonus, increase of salary, and perhaps an inheritance. I don't know, but the point I'm trying to make is that circumstances, like a financial circumstance, can change from one day to the next day. In our prayers, I want to challenge you not to focus on things that change, but rather focus on something that does not change. One thing I know never changes. And that's the one thing that should always direct our prayers. Malachi 3 verse 6 says it like this. For I am the Lord, I change not. The unfortunate part about our prayer life is our prayer life is often dependent on the circumstance. But I want to challenge you today. Focus your prayer life on something that never changes and He is God. God does not change. Hebrews 13 verse 8, the Amplified Version says this, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is always the same. Yesterday, today, yes, and forever to the ages. God does not change. Jesus does not change. Can I say, if we focus on the constant, that will mean our prayer life will also be constant. I don't want to just be a person or a Christian that prays in crisis mode. I want to be a Christian that prays in the good times, the bad times, all the time we should be communicating with our Father. If you look at Jesus, one of the keys to the success of his ministry was he didn't just pray to God when he was being crucified. He prayed on the mountaintops. He prayed every single time that he had an occasion to pray. He would be praying. He would always be in constant communication with God. So what is the point of this and how does this impact my prayer life? If God doesn't change and he doesn't, if his word doesn't change and by the way it doesn't, if God's promises remain the same and yes they do, then it's fairly obvious we in our circumstances are the, one, are the ones and the things that can and need to change. The only person that can change me, the only person that can change your circumstance today is the one who is constant, the one who's the same yesterday, today and forevermore. His name is Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I sometimes do not have the ability to change our circumstances, but God can. Prayer and trust in God can change us and our circumstances. 
So let's go a little bit further into that. Matthew 3 verse 2 says this, and saying, Jesus speaking, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now according to the Strong's Concordance, the word repentance does not just mean changing your lifestyle or changing a behavior. It literally means to change one's mind. In other words, change your way of thinking. The Amplified Translation says it like this. And saying, repent, listen to these words, think differently, change your mind, regretting your sins and changing your conduct. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Where a person will spend eternity, heaven or hell, changes. When you change your mind. You see, there was a time in my life where my destination was hell. Eternal separation from God. But when I changed my mind, my thinking towards Jesus Christ and the price that He paid on the cross, the fact that God loved me and sent His Son to die for me so that I will not perish, my mind changed in terms of Him being Lord over my life. My life changed. My destination from hell changed to heaven. Whatever circumstances you're dealing with, change. It changes when we change our mind. Romans 12 verse 2 says this, Do not be conformed to this world, this age, and this is the amplified version, fashioned after, adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitudes, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable, perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight. Can you understand? Can you see that when we change our minds and focus on the one who does not change, the one who is eternal, everything around us can change. Acts 3.19, the Living Bible says this, Now change your mind and attitude to God and turn to Him so that He can cleanse away your sins and send you wonderful times of refreshment from the presence of the Lord. We need to repent, church. We need to change our minds, not only about the Lord, but even the circumstances that we face. How about this? Philippians 4 verse 67. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So my point I'm trying to make is simply this. Our prayer life is often dependent on our circumstances, but I want to change that and say our circumstances are often dependent on our prayer life. I hope you caught that. So often, our prayer life is caught by circumstance. But I want to challenge you to change the circumstances, the environment in which you find yourself now, and how you can do that is by prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, I want things to change in my life. I want things to change in my finances. I want things to change in my church. And I know in my own strength, in my own power, I cannot change the circumstance. But that circumstance will not change my mind concerning what God can do in my life, in my church's life, in the financial situation that we might be in now. My circumstances is not going to dictate my faith. My faith is going to dictate my circumstances. Come on, someone get excited in the lounge. Someone get excited in the kitchen because God is still on the throne. God is still able to do great and mighty and wonderful things. And if you put your trust in the things of man that's going to fail you but put your trust in God today and things can change second thing I want to point out your attitude will determine your tolerance of the circumstance that you're facing there are some things in life we just got to tolerate but your attitude will determine whether or not these circumstances will take a toll on your life will harm your life will destroy your life, or these circumstances can be an opportunity for God to move in your life in a powerful way. Let me give you an example. One word, and immediately it's going to cause a reaction in your life. 
those in the room that's listening to me, one word for you. This one word is going to cause a reaction in your life. You know what the one word is? Come on. Traffic. Oh, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Who's experienced traffic in Fishhook? Oh my gosh. There's not one person I know that has not been affected by traffic. Traffic. You can't fly over it. You can't tunnel under it. So guess what? The way you react, your attitude in the traffic is going to cause you to react a certain way. Either you are going to freak out, bed angry, blow the hooter, be part of road rage, or you can have the attitude of just relax and let go. I learned a lesson from a good friend of mine. You know him well. His name is Heinrich Revere. Heinrich Revere taught me an incredible lesson about traffic. He made this statement to me, whenever they go on holiday, the holiday starts when you get in the car. So it doesn't matter if it takes longer for you to get to the destination. Why? Because you are on holiday. Ladies and gentlemen, the point I'm trying to make is simply this. The way you react, your attitude in the circumstance is either going to make that circumstance hell or it's going to create an environment where God can produce a miracle. It is always going to be up to you. Taxes, another word. Come on. We all know taxes. You either pay them or you go to jail. That's the choice. So guess what? We're not going to get out of taxes. So if we change our attitude towards taxes, perhaps it'll change our circumstance. Now, let me give you an example. There are some people that pay taxes. Here's the truth. They pay, their taxes is my salary. But they will complain about paying taxes, not focusing on the fact that they earn a great salary in order to pay the tax. Ladies and gentlemen, it depends on how you look at things. Your attitude towards something is going to create bitterness or it's going to create thankfulness. Your choice this morning, I want to challenge you as you listen to this, your choice, you choose to either allow the circumstance, your attitude in the circumstance, to destroy your life or to make your life. Like I said, I could go on and on and on with many more life's annoyances that we just have to tolerate whether it's a sports team that you're playing for perhaps it's your teenager that's hanging out with the wrong people but here's the real key we all go listen to this now we all go through unfairness come on if you're watching me there's been moments where you've been treated unfairly and life has been unfair we've all experienced disappointments we've all experienced failure We've all experienced tough times. But I will say this today. Because God is good and He has come to destroy the enemy and the works of the enemy, we have a choice to either react in these unfair, these disappointing moments, these moments of failure, these moments where it's tough and life is just not good. We have a choice to react either in the flesh or we can react in God's grace and God's goodness. It's your choice. Either way, listen to this, either way you're going to reap. If you react in God's way, you will reap His blessings. But if you react in the flesh, like road rage, you are going to reap of the flesh. I end off with this last scripture. Joshua 24:15. We all know it, but there's a powerful part to this that I want to challenge you with today. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, this is King James, by the way, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose, whose land you now dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose this day. Isn't it amazing? He didn't say, take some time, think about it. Take some time and dwell upon it. No, no. He challenges God's people. Choose this day. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what your prayer life is. 
I don't know what the prayer life of most average Christians are. But the reality is we've allowed circumstances to overtake our prayer life. We've allowed circumstances to dictate our prayer life. Whereas God has called us to be people of prayer. That means every day. Not some days, not on good days, not on bad days, but every day. Pray without ceasing. Don't stop praying. Don't allow circumstances to affect your faith in God. We all have circumstances. What you're facing today, you don't have to face alone. All we've got to do is call upon the Lord. And I want to challenge you to do that. Challenge you to become a man and woman of prayer. Are you ready to do that? I'm going to pray for you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that no matter what circumstance we face today, we do not face it alone. We've got God with us. I thank you, Lord, that wherever we go, we always get reminded of your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you, Father, that, Lord, right now, we want to be people of prayer. Why? Because Jesus was. Thank you for ministering to us. Thank you for speaking to us. We honor you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, tonight, we have our guest speaker from Wisconsin, U.S. of A, Pastor Malvane Donier, great friend of mine, someone who impacted my life. I'm only in the ministry today, honestly, because of men of God like that in my life. I want you to be part of a blessing tonight. Don't miss out. Online, roundabout, half past five, live at the church. Five o'clock, we'll be having our service. That's the start. But half past five, we'll stream the sermon. Don't miss out. It will be live on Facebook. Don't miss out. Blessings and catch you soon. Amen.